light-skinned women deserve a safe space as well. So I was, you know, replying to comments and stuff. I'm a little behind on comments and stuff. So if I haven't replied to you yet, don't worry, I will get to it. But I came across this one comment from an unambiguous woman and she was talking about, I think it was in my video where I talked about how men hit on you everywhere you go. (laughs) And she was saying how, you know, they go through the same thing, chase after her as well. It's not just an exotical experience. And she was saying that this light skin versus dark skin thing is slave, has slave code written all over it, something like that. So I just wanted to really reply to that in more in depth anyway, because a lot of people are probably thinking this. Uh, so as exoticals, we know that other groups of people go through things that we talk about. like. If you experience, if you have pretty privilege, I don't care what group you're in, you're gonna experience a lot of these things. It's pretty privilege isn't specifically for exoticals only. That's not what we're saying. I don't even know why people even think that's what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. Y'all think only exoticals can be pretty. Y'all think only exoticals can get a man. That's not what anybody is saying. We're not saying we're the only ones that can experience these things. This is just our safe space to talk about things that we all go through because we're not welcomed in other spaces. Haven't y'all been listening? All my life, I've been trying to fit into a space and I've never been able to fit in. I call my channel Pretty In Between because I've always been in between. When you're a black passing exotical, Like I said in my other video, you kind of get the most hate out of all the group of pretty girls because you have black admixture, but you're pretty. So think about that from, so for example, let's just say a racist guy sees me because this has happened before. A racist, somebody who is hardcore racist sees you. They don't like black people. They're not supposed to like black people, but then they see you. Your skin is lighter. You look a little different. You, you're attractive on top of that. So it's kind of like this whole battle in them with them finding you attractive, but you're also, you're black. So you're, they're not supposed to be. So there's that part of it. There's the part of it where the unambiguous women who think we're better than them, even though we never, I've never heard any exotical say this, but light skin exotical specifically, <laughs> You seem to get that a lot, you know, or darker skin exoticals with like type three hair and stuff, keener features. We tend to get the jealousy side from unambiguous black people, women mainly. I'm going to, I didn't say people for, because men can be jealous too. Let's just not get it fucked up. But I'm talking about. Yeah, because, you know, all groups can seem to get jealous of us when I really think about it. I'm not going to even exclude the men in this one because men are men can get jealous of lighter skinned women and darker skinned women with type three hair. I I've seen it. So this is a safe space for us to get together and talk about whatever we want to talk about, because this is our community. So we're just talking about the things that we can relate to. Not saying that we own this. We don't own pretty privilege. That's not what we're saying at all. You're always putting words in our mouths. We never said we were better. And we never said we were the prettiest of the... We're, we're, we're pretty and we're confident and we're only our pretty. That's kind of the difference between you know, us and other groups. We're owning our pretty. We don't care. We no longer care if people think we're being conceited or any of that because we love ourselves. So people keep trying to gaslight us and throw silencing tactics at us and think nobody's beefing over here. Like we're not, we're just, we're not accepted in other spaces. We're not. Even if we think we are, there's somebody in that group who has an ulterior motive or can't stand you. I've been in so many friend groups 
and I only seem to really truly get along with people who have my phenotype or look like me or an exotical themselves who don't who pretty much anyone who doesn't have an inferiority complex because I'm not just talking about unambiguous people there's white people that I have to talk about as well there's white people there's we call it the basic Bettys. you know there's basic Betty don't have a race there's no one race there's an Asian basic Betty, a white basic Betty, an unambiguous basic Betty, an exotical basic Betty. Okay. Okay. I'm kind of dealing with one at the moment is why I'm kind of like emphasizing on that because I'm going through that in real time right now. There's an exotical at my workplace who's in management who can be pretty but she's what we would consider a basic betty and i call a basic betty a person who don't really take care of their parents who don't really care how they come out the house with what they wear and then they have the nerve to get mad at you or feel some type of way about you because you don't want to come out the house looking like you just got out of bed i don't come out the house looking like i just got out of bed because you're mad at me because I don't do that. Or you feel some type of way about me because I don't do that. So it's basic Bettys, it's fem cells, it's pick me's who give us a heart. And <laughs> so it's not a particular race, but, 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 strong but. We have noticed in our experience as a collective that we get the most hate from unambiguous black women. The most hate. It's very cold. You don't even have to. In customer service situations, if I see an unambiguous woman at the counter, at the desk, wherever, at the receptionist, whatever, I already, I kind of anticipate something there because I've always received something there. And I don't know if you guys are sitting there thinking in your heads, like, does she think she's better than me? Like, what do you guys be thinking in your head, seriously? Because I've had so many rude, unambiguous people i've never had a rude basic betty white girl treat me disrespectfully in customer service situations that's why i'm saying like unambiguous women have made me feel the worst have they've introduced me to colorism if it wasn't for unambiguous black women i wouldn't have known about colorism i'm i'm just being honest even the men that would call me light skin and stuff like that Honestly, I didn't really even start experiencing colorism from unambiguous men until I started going to college. And I think, honestly, that was because of my environment. I grew up in, like, multicultural environments, and there is no colorism like that when you're in a multicultural environment like that. But when I went to college, I went to an HBCU. So that's, you know, majority black people. So my experience was different, and that's where I, you know, dealt with colorism on the, that side of the scale, like with men and stuff. But I was introduced to it from women. My grandma and my mom introduced it to me. And yeah, so <laughs> color, like this light skin and dark skin thing, there's no beef, at least there's not supposed to be a beef because the exoticals created a space i don't know if that's what you guys are thinking this is just our space to be able to admit and talk and share our experiences without being gaslit without people trying to humble us without people trying to did i say gaslighting already without people trying to you know downplay our experience we're not even allowed to say we love our skin complexion without feeling some type of way y'all don't have to go through that as darker skin unambiguous like people praise you guys and you know when i do go on tiktok and i see somebody talk about being dark skin i see a lot of people praising her skin complexion and everything but then when i see somebody who says that they're light skin or, or something like that i'll go in the comment section and people are going like you're not that light skin or because there's only one tone of light skin, apparently. 
<laughs> so people will be going in on it. If you even dare say you're light skin out your own mouth, other people can only call you light skin. You can't call yourself light skin. It's kind of the same thing with the pretty thing. You're not allowed to call yourself pretty. Only other people, especially if you're actually really pretty, you're not make, made up pretty. You're not even allowed to say that you're actually pretty. Because that triggers people. <laughs> it's wild to me. Oh my god. But I'm very inclusive. I'm a very inclusive person. I welcome all people to my platform. I don't discriminate whatsoever. As long as you don't come over here and try to start mess and stuff like that. Because I don't do drama. If you're here to support, to be an ally, cool. Or to learn things from us, cool. Just keep it respectful is all I ask. I'm not disrespecting anybody on this platform. So don't come over here disrespecting anybody. That's why we're over here because we don't want to be disrespected. Y'all coming over here disrespecting us. We're, we've done left where y'all told us we we weren't even welcome that anyway. <laughs> y'all told us to get out of y'all spaces. I I used to try so hard to be a part of the Black Empowerment Movement, you know, all of that stuff. I started my own colorism channel and everything, but I'm not allowed to talk about the issues that I deal with as a lighter skinned person and a, a lighter skinned black person. So, you know, we kind of have to do this. You know, I do welcome people to listen in who aren't exotical so they can get an understanding of where we're coming from. A lot of it y'all can relate to, of course. We're not saying we own any of this pretty privilege stuff or anything. We don't own any of it. We just experience it. Because people put our phenotypes on such a high pedestal. That people start projecting onto us. And they're the ones who really would. They're the ones who would probably feel conceited and all that stuff. If they were an exotical. But, you know, we know we're pretty. We don't even have to say it all the time. We we literally don't. We just walk. Our aura carries so much light. It radiates so much. Like we literally don't have to speak when we walk into a room and get all the attention. And you have to have that kind of a confidence, that kind of a mindset, that kind of beauty. And it's possible for basic daddies to be beautiful. It's possible, but if you don't want to be beautiful, that's cool too. Just don't hate or be mad at the next girl who wants to be that. Don't hate on her at all. It's not easy being in the spotlight like that. It's not easy. It's not easy keeping yourself up all the time. It's work. It takes work. Well, being beautiful is a lifestyle. It really is. And, you know, you can be basic, but you can still be pretty, though. But we're talking about, like, we're talking about dime piece level pretty. You know what I'm saying? Like, 10. So there's levels to it, clearly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you could be a 5, 6, 7. We're talking about 9s and 10s over here. So if you're confident in who you are, you're going to turn your dad piece, you walk with your head high, you got a personality, you, you, every, you're you likable, everybody likes you, you're popular, you feel me? Um, people are just, I mean, you're going to naturally trigger people who, who aren't leveled up because you remind them of the work that they need to do or have let themselves not want to do because I don't know of the reason. Maybe that's just their, that could just be their aesthetic for all I know, you know, but to each his own, you know. All I ask is not to hate on the next person who, you know, wants to carry themselves a certain way, <laughs> who has that aura. There's no, don't be don't be trying to sabotage the girl. Don't be trying to humble the girl. Because you, you know what I'm saying? Stop trying to hurt people who are leveled up. It just doesn't make sense. I know misery loves company, but damn. 
And if you're not miserable, you're not jealous, then prove it by leaving us alone and not even hating or nothing. But some people can't even hide it at all. But that's all I really wanted to talk about. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening.